Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about the instant center and the importance of the instant center to the suspension behavior. And although this video is mainly theoretical, uh, I believe that this video will be very important to you to understand more about how the suspension works. Recently, two suspension experts, Antonio Ozuna from Linkage Design and Jerome Huite, alert me for a common mistake that I that I did in a, in a particular subgroup of bikes. So eight bikes from the, the 50 of total analyzed. And this group of bikes is called the swing R4 bar, uh, where the the rear pivot is above the the rear the rear wheel. So in this in this group of bikes I I had a mistake and I already uh, deleted those videos and I'm sorry for that. But more important than the, the actual mistake is to understand what, what was the mistake and explain you uh, why, why did I commit that mistake. So uh, the other bikes are correct and this problem only affected a couple of bikes. So uh, in this table I, I have the correction, so as you can see these were the values of the video for the anti-squat and uh, although the mistake didn't change drastically the, the values, so low anti-squats uh, are still low and good anti-squats are still good, uh, it's, it, although it didn't change much it's, it's a mistake and in the anti-rise there are some cases where uh, it changes a lot the, the value. Okay, but let's see what was the problem. To explain you what was the problem, I have to explain you what is the instant center of the rear suspension. The instant center um, is, is basically the point where the wheels and the brakes are rotating around. And this point is very important and will determine the acceleration and the braking behavior of the suspension. Uh, this, this point, the instant center, uh, is also known as the virtual pivot point. So you may you may heard uh, this this name uh, before. So in a single pivot bike, it's really easy to determine the instant center because it's the point where the the brakes and the wheel are rotating around, and since there is only a pivot, it's easy to determine the instant center. So the instant center is the main pivot okay so the the brakes and the, the wheel are rotating around this point now in this case uh, the Scott Gambler it looks more complicated because you have here lots of stuff but actually the Scott Gambler is a single pivot bike because this is the main pivot okay so the wheel and the brakes the rear the whole rear triangle is rotating around this pivot. So although it looks uh, more complex, it's a single pivot and the instant center is located here and it does not move. Okay, and these links here are just uh, to, to fine tune the, the leverage ratio and the progressivity. Okay, now in this case, it's completely different. Okay, so now the um, the brakes and the wheel okay, are attached to this frame member, to the seat stay. And the seat stay, in turn, are attached to the chain stay and also to this uh, rocker arm. Okay? So the wheel and the brakes are floating between the, the rocker arm and the chain stay. Okay, so in this case, the instant center is basically this point here. Okay, you call you determine these these points by by crossing a line, a straight line between this pivot and this pivot. You cross the line, okay, and then you do the same uh, and on the on those pivots and you cross the line. The intersection of those lines are is the instant center. Okay, so this means that the wheel and the brakes are rotating around this point here. OK? 
okay? And as you can see in the specialized demo, the instant center is located very, very far away, um, actually in front of the, 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 fr the front wheel. So how does these magical points affect uh, the suspension behavior? I will just talking about the, the braking behavior. Uh, probably in the next video I can talk about the anti-squat and the pedaling behavior. But for the braking is really easy. You just now um, cross a line between the, um, the rear wheel contact point here. You cross a line until the instant center. And this line is called the anti-rise uh, vector. And basically, this will determine how much the suspension is affected by the braking forces. The more uh, the slacker, the, the lower the angle of this, of this line, the more independent uh, the suspension will be uh, from the braking forces. Okay? So if you have a line really steep like this, it means that the, the suspension will be very affected by the braking forces. In this case, specialized demo has a really low um, uh, anti-rise value, so it means that the bike is very independent from the braking forces. Okay, so when you brake, uh, the braking forces will not compress uh, the suspension, so the suspension uh, remains fully active uh, whether you apply the brakes or not. Okay, so that was uh, the case for the, the demo, the FSR. Now you have here another example. So this is um, a VPP-like uh, suspension. So in this case, the brakes and the wheel are attached to this rear triangle, okay? And this real rear triangle is a solid piece. It does not move. And this, this rear triangle is floating Okay, so it's attached to the main frame and it's floating by uh, around these, these two links here. Okay, so the, the rear triangle is attached to the main frame by these links here. One link and these links here. So this means that the instant center will be the, the line, the intersection line of, of this line here and this line here, okay? So virtual pivot points or the instant center I see uh, is over there. So this means that both the wheel and the brakes are rotating around this point here. Okay, so now you have here um, a diagram, a video, showing the instant center position of the, the pole bikes. And as you can see, the instant center moves, moves uh, when the suspension uh, is compressed. So that's why it's called instant center, because it's the center for a given instant, and this, this center moves. And again, it's the intersection of this link with this link here, okay? So now that you, you understand that what is the instant center, I will talk about the mistake. So what do you think about, in this case, uh, con operator? What do you think uh, it will be the instant center? The obvious uh, answer will be this, okay? So you take this pivot, like the FSR, and you do this, and the instant center is located very, very far away. However, in this case, this is not correct. Because, in this case, the wheel here, the wheel and the brakes are actually attached to the chain stay. Okay? So they are not in the seat stay. So in this case, um, the brakes and the wheel are not floating around. Okay? So they are, they are physically attached to the main frame by the, the chain stay. So this means that the instant center on this bike is the main pivot, okay? So the con operator act, uh, behaves as a single suspension bike and not as an, uh, a virtual pivot bike as the FSR, FSR or, the, um, or the VPP. Okay, so this is incorrect and this is the correct, okay? Instant center is the main pivot. 
and that was the the error that I, I did on this type of bikes where the um, the rear pivot is above the wheel okay so the wheel and the brakes are in the chain stay and not in the seat stay okay so this is the correct anti-rise line crossing uh, the this instant center here okay and not this one okay this one is the incorrect line uh, that i did it and that's why uh, these bikes were correctly incorrectly analyzed okay so as you can see in the case of con operator the anti-rise values are completely different different because of this difference here of of the instant in, in anti-rise lines okay so now another case the track slash okay this case is special because the the rear pivot is concentric to the rear axle okay so in this case the wheel is actually both attached to the seat stay and to the chain stay okay so the brakes are obviously attached to the seat stay and therefore the brakes are floating around okay so they are floating around uh, between this frame member and this frame member here okay so the instant center for the brake is this point here as the fsr similar to the fsr however what do you think about the the instant center of the wheel since the wheel is attached both to the chain stay and to the seat stay so what do you think actually there is the the the, the funny part about this is that since the wheel is concentric to the rear uh, pivot there is no difference if you simulate the bike as the instant center there or there the result will be exactly the same and that's the the funny part about this so okay so this is a bit complex but the, for those that uh, are um, are familiar with this so simulating the track slash with a moving instant center there for both the wheel and the brakes will give you the same result as simulating the track slash as um, a single pivot bike for the for the wheel and with a floater braking arm for the brakes okay so it will give you the same result and by the way a float, floating brake arm is this piece here and we can talk about this in a in a future video Okay, so let's let's forget that because it was a bit compl complex, and let's talk about um, a easy to understand and funny thing. Okay, so we know that the brake is on the um, seat stay, but what what do you think if you put the brake on the chain stay? What do you think how the bike will perform? Okay, so in this case the the brake on the seat stay, the instant center is there. We already know it, but if you place the brake on the chain stay then the brake the instant center for the brake will be there okay because the brake will be physically attached to the chain stay which in turn is rotating around that point so that will, will be the point for the instant center uh, if you place the brake on the chain stay and therefore uh, if you place the brake on the chain stay this will be the anti-rise line okay so as you can see, you have a really steep anti-rise line, and the real case, which which the where the brakes are placed on the um, the seat stay. So this is the the green line, the real case. So as you can see, the bike is quite good and is quite independent on the braking forces. And there is actually um, a good way to to visualize this without uh, these theoretical things. So actually, uh, you can look just to the amount of rotation, the, the amount of movement that the brake caliper uh, makes around the disc. Okay, so as you can see, the seat stay does not move much around the, the disc, okay? While the shin stay moves much more when you compress the rear suspension. Okay, so you can see uh, a zoom here. Okay, the, sh the, um, the seat stay moves just a little bit around the disc, while the, um, the shin stay m moves much more around the disc. 
okay so I did the, the correct amount of movement here so if you place uh, the brake calipter on the um, on the seat stay the the, the move the, the amount of movement that the calipter will will do around the disc when the suspension is compressed uh, is this this uh, amount here okay and if you place the brake calipter in the shin stay it will move twice as much okay so that's why the anti-rise values for the, the brake calipter here are half of of these values when you put the brake calipter on the shin stay okay so by in in another words if you put the brake here the bike will perform much be much better when you apply the brakes uh, and if you put the, the brake calipter here um, the braking will affect more the, the suspension okay so that was the um, that was the explanation for the instant center and uh, now you know that now you understand the, the error that I did in this type of bikes just in this type of bikes and uh, I'm sorry for that mistake but uh, I did I did my best and uh, mistakes can can happen but the, um, the important thing uh, of, of this is that mistakes are part of the learning the learning process and now I understand this much better than I understood in the past so I hope that you also now understand much better uh, how the, the rear suspension works and uh, okay so sorry for the error but the other bikes analyzed so far uh, they are they are okay they are correct and actually I have here some positive comments for uh, bike manufacturers and engineers um, and that's it guys so I hope that you, you like the video I, I will I will talk about this uh, more times in the future because this, this is not uh, really easy to understand at the first time but um, yeah that's it and see you next time guys so bye